Do you have difficulty painting or drawing because the logical side of your mind is too much of a critic? Maybe it's too much of a perfectionist. Today I'm going to show you how you can activate the right side of your brain by painting with water and then we'll do a little heat embossing for a different look. This is very much related to Betty Edwards drawing on the right side of the brain and the principles that she shares in her book. Hi, I'm Amber from the WOW Creative Team. Take advantage of the discount code below and while you're there, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's jump right in. I have a piece of Saunders Waterford High White Cold Press Watercolor Paper here and a number 12 pointed round brush. I'm going to start off by just painting some circles on a piece of watercolor paper. I'm just painting it in clean, clear water. Now, the beauty of this is that if I, I can't see what I'm painting at all, you're going to see me lift up the paper and even then it's difficult for me to see where I've painted and especially when I put it back down I can't see those previous circles. So I have no idea if what I'm painting is actually turning out like a circle, if it looks more like a boulder or a stone, if I'm not getting all of the parts. So the left side of my brain, the logical side, the analytical side, the side that says that circle isn't perfect, let me try to perfect it isn't able to kick in by just painting in water without that ability to really scrutinize what we have there. I'm going to come up with a much more artistic piece here because my right brain is taking over. So really what I'm looking at here is I'm thinking about the edges of the circle and the negative space that's in between these circles that I really can't see. So now I'm going to take a wow embossing powder and this one is called Judith's Blush and I'm going to sprinkle it over my paper here. Now it's going to stick to the wet parts and we're going to see what we've painted with this water. And I can see that I missed some areas. They're certainly not perfect circles by any means. But if I had actually been painting this with paint or a color and I could have seen those circles, it would not have turned out as artistic as this or as loose as this. And I probably wouldn't have liked it as much as I actually do. I would have been really focused on how perfect are those circles. Here I have the wow heat tool on the highest setting and I'm just melting the embossing powder and heat setting it. So. I actually filmed this video and I was doing, I was looking for an art book for my daughter for Christmas and I came across an interview with Betty Edwards who, as I said, wrote Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. So here I'm going to add a smaller circle. So I switched to a number eight round brush and I'm roughly going to add a smaller circle on the edge of each one of these larger circles. And as I was watching this interview, I was totally fascinated by it. So I have the book on order and I definitely can't wait to read it. But as I started editing this video, I realized that because I had painted this in water and I couldn't see what I was doing, what I was doing was activating the right side of the brain. So similar to the principles that Betty uses in some of the exercises in her book. So it was a really interesting concept that I hadn't really thought of before. I mean, I knew that definitely um, perfectionism and wanting things to look quote unquote right definitely holds me back and can make art and drawing frustrating. Um, but this was a really interesting exercise to paint in water and then put on this embossing powder and kind of see what magic was on the page. So I really enjoyed this exercise. I hope it's something that you will try out. I know this is kind of out here for the videos that I normally do, but I was really inspired by this interview with Betty Edwards and I'll try and find it and link it down below because I thought it was really interesting. Okay, so I'm dropping down my brush size one more time. So this is a number six round brush and this time I'm gonna add like um, little grouping of three lines or vertical dashes. And again, I'm just adding those um, somewhat connected to those large circles and I can't see them. I don't know if they're spaced evenly. I doubt that they are, but we'll be able to see what it looks like when I add 
Eula's Cognac. And so this, this embossing powder is a mixed granule embossing powder. So it has like this yellow ochre, but there's also some metallic gold in this powder as well. It's just gorgeous. I'm really enjoying these new powders, which are a collaboration with Alexandra Rinke. They're just so pretty. So I can't even remember where I put all these lines. So I'm just making sure that I sprinkle it over the entire panel to make sure that we get all of them. And then if there's any extra embossing powder, then I have a dry paintbrush that I'm just gonna knock that off with. Now here, I'm gonna start heating this powder from behind because it has those larger granules in there. If you start from the front, then you can blow off all those metallic granules and I definitely wanna have those in there. I just love how this turned out, you guys. I mean, it just has much more of an artsy feel than I feel like I would have gotten if I had painted it with um, color. So I was really pleased with how this turned out and it was not very stressful. I wasn't stressing over what any of these shapes looked like or trying to perfect them. So here I've gone ahead and cut this with a rectangular die and because I wanted to get a twofer out of it. So I have this frame and then I also have the smaller panel which I'll pop up on some sticky back fun foam. Here I have the Altenew eucalyptus jar stamp set. I'm gonna use that eucalyptus jar and this is going to sit underneath that frame. So I went through my inks and picked out a light pink and kind of like a dusty rose. And so I have frosty pink here. Now ultimately I decided that this is too light of a pink. You can barely see it. Um, it coordinates really well with the light pink embossing powder, but it was just too light to actually see the image. So here I'm stamping the sentiment, which is also from Eucalyptus Jar in Rouge Ink, and that is almost like a perfect match for the darker pink embossing powder. So I went ahead and lined up that Eucalyptus Jar stamp again, and I'm just stamping that in Rouge as well. Now, ultimately, I ended up adding some black fine liner to the high in that stamp. And I also added a black sub sentiment, which just adds a little more contrast to this card and I think balances out the design. For this card, I added a Birch Press Design Sugar Script Hello die, as well as a sub sentiment. And check out the gold. Here you can see a close up of those patterns. I think they're just beautiful. I love this color combination. Here's a little sneak of the next card that we're gonna do, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna paint with water, and then we'll heat emboss what we painted. So I'm starting with my first stripes with a number 12 round brush, that same one we used at the beginning, and I'm roughly following the diagonal line on my glass mat, and my idea was to have three different sizes of stripes, so I'll use the 12, the eight, and the six like we did in the last card. And I wanted to see more of that metallic gold from that Eula's Cognac embossing powder. So with the thickest stripe, that's the color that I'm gonna use. So this card is definitely going to be more bold. Um, whenever you have a mixed powder like this, you wanna make sure you shake it before you start sprinkling it on. You can see those large granules there. And I had a huge surprise that they're literal, that, what, that area wasn't wet at all. Even though I had good contact with my brush, it totally wasn't wet. So right about at this time, my left brain was kicking in and I was like, oh yeah, no, this is not working for me. I don't like it. I don't like that broken line. I don't like how there's a lot of pieces missing, but I really had to kind of shove that down and say, no, we're going with it. So I kind of put the critical side of my brain aside and went with the right side and went back to focusing on edges and negative space. And it was, this is the number eight round brush again. So I've stepped the brushes down one more time. And, you know, then I was looking at that negative space of that stripe that was incomplete. And I thought, okay, well, that would be a perfect place for a sentiment. Um, and then look at this, like, I don't know if I'm just not getting my brush wet enough or what, but like those didn't turn out at all. So you want to make sure that you have a nice wet brush. Um, and the water is obviously going to dry quickly. So you want to put your embossing powder on and then heat set it right away. You don't want to wet or you don't want to wait rather and do the other colors. You want to heat set one at a time the water is going to dry fast, unlike embossing ink that dries slow. So here I have the Altenew Rosy Posy stamp set, 
and I'm going to grab this hello sentiment, which fits in there just perfectly. And the O is going to overlap that embossing just a bit, which I think is great. Again, that adds to that kind of artistic feel to it. And look at it, it fit right in there. So I'll pop this up on Sticky Back Fun Foam as well so it gets a little dimension. And here you can see a close-up of those metallic granules. I love the texture of that um, embossing. And I think this color combination is just so special. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's projects. I know that it was a little bit different than what I normally do, but as I said, I was so inspired by Betty's interview. And again, I will link that down below. Her book was originally printed in 1979, but I don't have any formal art training. And in my family, it was my sister and my uncle who were amazing artists. So I didn't really become artistic until I was an adult because that was kind of my sister's role. So I'm definitely excited to learn from this book. If you learned something from this video today, please show your appreciation by hitting the like and subscribe button down below. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you soon with more inspiration.